All right, everybody. My name is Fausto Puglisi from Cybertrain University. Thank you for being here. We're going to talk about and uh, cover some really important topics. I know a lot of you here are you know, seeing what's happening in the market, what's going on around the world. Maybe you're concerned about your own future, future revenues. Do you hold on to stocks? Do you want to try a different industry? Well, we're going to talk about the basic understanding of the financial markets. Now, to be a good trader and to understand you know, what to do and how to succeed in trading, you got to know how to play the game. And we're going to cover those basics because we're going to try to make this as educational as possible so you know why you need to learn before you could earn. Now, before we do that, everyone, uh, let me just get my things up here. There we go. Uh, just quick little risk disclosure before we get started. Um, I'm not making any guarantees or promises that this is work. This is strictly just educational purposes only. And uh, you please be very um, aware of that trading is a very high risk and be very wise before you start going out there and trading. All right. Now, um, with that said, uh, my name is Fausto Puglisi. I'm the president and founder of Cybertree University. I basically started this company about 30 years ago. I want to tell you a little bit about us because... It's the future of why I've been around for 30 years and why we're still doing it and why you should understand to do it that long, you must be doing something right. Now, uh, my parents are first generation Italians. Um, I'm actually, for, I'm first generation, I'm sorry. And they came here for a better life. And you know, one thing they taught me is that, listen, if you want to be good at something, you got to go where the money is. You got to surround yourself with good people that know what they're doing. And with that, I, living in New York, what do we do here? We trade the market all day. That's what we usually do. That's what we're known for. So over the years, I have trained tens of thousands, uh, if not hundreds of thousands of people just like you out there. And what I'm looking for is to hopefully have a lot of you to come and join our family, okay? And be part of our team like everyone else. Now, I'm also very, I'm featured on some of the biggest networks in the industry, and, uh, you know, one of the big things is that being a veteran and being one of the original day traders, there's not too many people out there that know how to trade that because it all starts from the roots where you started. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give everyone access to my book. Um, you could go buy on Amazon. You could pay, you know, 40 bucks for it, or you can get it here for free. So for you to be here for the 40 minutes, um, I'm at the end of it, I'm going to give it to you and it's a fast read. It's color. It's got great charts. It's going to teach you how to trade the market. The key of the book is exactly what the word says, how to beat market makers at their own game. So let's get started and, uh, let's stop talking about me. All right. Um, and let's talk about why we're here today. We're here to cover the fundamentals of the market. Okay. And it all starts from the very, very beginning. To be a good trader, you have to understand what is the market. How does this thing work? It's not about just, just saying, oh, I want to trade futures. I want to trade options oh, because this got better leverage or because I can, I have a small account. Everything revives around the stock market. And you want to learn how to trade You know the markets in general. You have to learn how to trade the stock market first. Now, what is an actual stock? I mean, how did it all start? It? I mean, well, what is a stock in general? It's basically ownership of a company. You know, a um, good friend of mine yesterday just went public on the New York Stock Exchange. Why they do that? They look to raise money. Um, they want to get to that next level. And, you know, there are pros and cons to be public. I mean, granted, some people like to do it because, you know, it helps to bring up exposure to the company. Um, it also helps uh, bring uh, equity to the company. So there, there's profits that come along, there's dividends that come along, but listen, not every stock that goes public is also very successful also. But just to keep in mind, being, you know, um, you know what you're doing when you're being a trader, you have to remember that you're, you're part owning of a company. That's what you are. You're a shareholder. Now, the fundamentals part about it is that, you know, what you get from it, you're going to raise money. You're going to, you got to come out with earnings announcements, which you know, this week has been a very, very big earnings announcements week. A lot of companies came out with earnings. And I just want to kind of remind everybody about companies, how they work, that I was always taught as a trader, a company always goes out of business every three months. Why is that? Because being public, you have to report earnings. 
And earnings is like, okay, is the company growing? How much money is it making? All that stuff. So um, what is the PE ratio, price per earning, you know, for what it's making? Um, there's a lot of things that come into factor. And I know that some of you, we don't need to get into the mechanics of it, but to let you know, a company grows by you investing money into it, you being a shareholder, and they're taking that money that they raised from you and building up their PE ratio. Now, regarding about certain indexes. Now, when it comes to certain indexes, you have to understand that when we trade the markets, we do look at certain indexes as in the S&P 500, the, uh, the Dow Jones. Uh, S&P is made up of 500 stocks. I think the Dow Jones made up of, I think it's 30 stocks, maybe 40, don't quote me on it. But um, you know, they take the best companies out there, they put them in there. And the index is a kind of a little bit more of a barometer to kind of get a feel of where the market's going. So when you're going out there and you're trading and you want, and everyone's always looking like, oh, like like today is uh, the Dow up, is the Dow, I mean, it, it, it's up. Like yesterday, it was up huge, you know, so it was the S&P. They do trade side by side, but once again, there's also the NASDAQ, you know, index. You know, they all have, um, basically it's made up of a bunch of companies that they want to put into their index. What kind of gives you an overall perspective of, uh, it, 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 not more perspective, but more of an indicator of what the market's doing as a whole. Now, the strategies behind this is being a trader is that we're here to make money, right? Um, but the goal is, is not to lose it. And what we look for as traders, as strategies wise, is we're looking for momentum, meaning we want stocks to have good volatility, good price action, um, good, you know, good order flow, a lot of buyers, a lot of sellers, you know, a lot of action in it. So the whole strategy, other than when you're finding a stock that you want to trade, you want to make sure you're trading something that has, you know, that's moving, that has interest, something that has volatility in it. Because some of you out there, are you have to understand there are over 20 thousand stocks that trade out there not every single one of them so being part of a good trader you got to have a good strategy and at cyber trade university that is one of the first things we teach you here and that is the first t which is called tradable what does that mean the stock's got good spreads good volatility good charts and everything else and by the way everybody here is going to be happy to join us you know and see that live in the market too because we want to kind of you know there's always so much we could cover but we have a very in-depth library to kind of go into that great detail. Now, the second most important thing, people make a mistake um, in trading. It's not about making money. It's about also risk management. Now, how does that pertain to us? Well, listen, does anybody here know and take a lucky guess? How many people here make that hit lotto um, file bankruptcy? You ever thought about that? It's over 80%. Now, how in the right mind, after someone wins, wins millions and millions of dollars that never had it, files bankruptcy? It's because of money management. How many of you here work for a company and went out of business or knew somebody went out of business? It was about money management. Um, how many of you here know somebody that filed bankruptcy or here you're trying to teach your kids how to manage your money? It's money management. Trading's the same thing. One of the big things that we teach you when it comes to trading is you have to know exactly what the risk is when you get into a trade, because remember, you did not make any money until you sell it. There's a lot of risk management that comes along with it. Are you doing your journals? Are you reviewing why you lost money in that stock? Did you know where the big orders were? Um, did you only risk what you could afford to lose? Because that's a big mistake. So risk management is also one of the uh, cardinal rules when it comes to trading. Another thing that you have to look at when it comes to trading and be successful is the analy analytics of tools that you need. Now, a lot of us here want to go out there and use, and you probably heard about them, indicators and certain brokerage firms, but there's a lot more that's going to come along with that. And we're going to cover that. We're going to cover that into trading. We're going to talk about level three and level four. Um, so it's just not more or less just looking at the economics indicators of it. It's also following the buyers and sellers, but those analytics are very, very key important tools towards your success into trading.
And then the other big mistake that people make, which is also very difficult to deal with, is the psychology. You know, the hardest thing to teach people what to do is discipline, okay? And, you know, and the psychology part of it. Some of us get too emotional. Some of us go out there and we don't want to take losses. We don't want to admit that we're wrong. You know, some people just, you know, at the end of the day, got to get divorced, right? And some of you have. And it's a very, very big failure rate. But you know what? We tried it. We did it. Stock's the same thing. Stocks are great. Get a divorce to a stock could be very expensive. Some people might, might not like it. But as a good trader, you have to know that you can't take things personal. And it's part of the game. Fear and greed is what destroys everyone in trading. Okay? Um, greed is not good when it comes to trading. It's all about making a day's pay. So it's not about finding out who's the next millionaire who made money in the stock market. It's about, did you make money consistent? And did you walk out and uh, with a profit? And if you lost, you lost with a very, very little loss. But psychology has a lot to do with it. One of the very uh, big, big lessons that we teach at Cyber Trade University, but just giving you a little crash, uh, crash course on that, you know that's something that you have to learn with experience. Now, Another big thing that you have to keep an eye on is market regulation. Now, when it comes to regulations with the exchanges, um, the SEC plays a very big role on maintaining the integrity of the stock market, understanding the compliance, the essentials, what rules are in play. So listen, everybody thinks that trading the stock market, you're dealing with a bunch of crooks and thieves. Trust me, listen, the SEC has once in a while has dropped, which is very rare, has dropped the ball. Remember Bernie Madoff? SEC had an office in his building, okay? How did they let that happen? Um, if you're familiar with the Bernie Madoff, uh, you know, Ponzi scheme that he had. It just happens. But trust me, the SEC and the FTC are very, very strict on these rules. So, you know, don't think that there's that many games when you're dealing with thieves and cheat cheats. They're in every business. If you go buy a car, they're, they, they're doing that. Your boss, your, 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 your employee. But there are regulations that do come along with it. And going public in a company, you know, and in trading in the, in the market, now you step into that role, realm, you know, and let me tell you, you got stockbrokers that being regulated by the SEC, everything else. So just feel comfortable that you're in good hands, knowing that the SEC is protecting your best interest as a trader. Now, regarding about the global markets, by trading today's markets, um, listen, when it comes to the impact of the market and understanding the global dynamics of, you know, of investors' decisions, the, what we're seeing that's happening every day with the wars that are going on and the, you know, um, which will cause military stocks to go up. If it's the global warming that people are concerned about, and that's going to cause other stocks to move. Global markets do have a big impact. What's happening in China with, you know, anything that's happening over there regarding about the companies uh, that trade in the U.S. market. It all has something to be affected because the market is trading all over the world. It's just not the U.S. market. There are other markets out there and there are other stocks that do trade on different exchanges around the world, too. So be very aware that the global markets do have a very impact because when you when the market closes here at four o'clock, technically it doesn't around the world is still trading and those stocks will affect. But in in, in hindsight, the, new, the, the, the U.S. market is the most powerful market in the world. Now, the ethics of trading, you have to keep in mind that um, you have to understand the principles and the, the investment decisions. At Cyber Trade University, we take the time to kind of show you, you know, what is involved to use the right platforms, the right tools. You need to know have the right brokerage accounts, um, the right funding that you need, the right mentality that you need. You know, you got to have this. There's a responsibility comes with trading. It's not like you buy something and you just walk away. You got to know exactly how to how to execute, how to use something called ECNs, how to actually use market orders, limit orders. Um, it's important for an investor like you to go on the uh, go out there and understand it. 50% of the traders fail just by not understanding the, the rules of trading. And I know that's why a lot of you are here, because you want to know those rules. And we're going to show you those rules coming up. When I start showing you certain things, I'm going to show you how to follow those big iceberg orders, which are big block orders in the market. 
but you got to understand the basic principles when it comes to trading. And it's all about keeping it basic, following the buyers and sellers. Now, when it comes to future trends um, in the market and on site, you know, basically you have to understand that it's not the past that you have to focus on that's going to be indicative of the future. It it's it's the future of those orders that are going to make the future. So one of the people that uh, a mistake that people make is they keep focusing on indicators. They focus on you know previous supports and resistance levels. It doesn't really work that way. Um, you have to understand is that there are high frequency trades, algorithms, uh, dark pools, uh, BlackRock, Goldman Sachs, institutions. It's these people that control the market. And the way you're going to learn here at Cybertrade University is we're going to teach you those orders that you're going to see in the future. And that's what we're basically here going to cover. We're going to discuss why 90% of the traders fail. And that's what you basically just seen, just the basics of fundamentals of the market. But now you're going to see what how we read the future because we don't want to be 90% at failure rate. A lot of people fail because not only because of ignorance, it's a lot of it because self of it, it's self-inflicted wounds because they just don't know how to trade. Because you have to ask yourself, who really trained you? Now, I want to ask everybody a question. Now, I know I've been talking for a while. I want to get more interactive with you. Um, let's think about this. Is anyone here any one of these? You know, as a trader, you fall in any of these categories. Are you too afraid? Are you too greedy? Are you too analytical? Anyone here fall? Just say, oh, I'm one of the one. I am all three. <laughs> uh, I am zero. Just out of curiosity. Uh, Alex, you're a little bit more on the greedy side. GB says, I'm, I'm too afraid. I'm too greedy. Marv says, I'm all three. Lynn says, I'm none of them. Okay. We could be honest with you. That's good. Too analytical, too analytical yogas. Okay. Too greedy. All right. Well, we're going to cover those. And you know what? You're going to make these mistakes. It's part of the game. So how do you deal with them? This is what we're going to cover. In each case, traders got to look at the got you know have to be looking backwards, and that's what they do. They kind of always want to look what's in the rearview mirror. It's not what's in the what's behind you; it's in what's in front of you. So you can, so you can't trade consistently. Consistently, kind of keep looking. Oh, there's a support level. Oh, there's the resistance level in the past. So if that resistance was in the past. It's got to be resistance levels now. It doesn't work that way. So stop looking what's happening. Because indicators are laggers. You don't want to be a lagger. You want to be a leader. So that's what most pay, most tra traders do. But we need to look what's going on to the future. And the future is the future orders. So most indicators forecast on based on historical, da historical data. And I know a lot of you here probably use indicators. And, and listen, there are if not hundreds, thousands of them. And there are so many people that are going to tell you why their indicator is better than his indicator, or one person's going to explain that indicate better than the other person. But who, who are these indicators? They're invented by mathematicians. It's not realistically what you're looking to do. What I would, and here's, look, look at this example. I'll give you an example right here. You tell me, fellow traders, which one's easy to read? Chart number one or chart number two? Let's see how you guys figure this one out. Which one's easier to read? JP, Yogis, Alex, do you think? Everyone else hopefully should be saying the same thing. It should be number one. So you tell me you don't need a MACD. You tell me you don't need a, a volume bar. You tell me you don't need a moving average. It's called the KISS method. Keep it super simple. That's what we basically do here. Because the more data you put up, the more you think, the more you analyze, the later, you, you, the, the less profitable you're going to be. So let's get away from the laggers and let's start looking over to the future. Okay. How do we look out to the future? The, the, the answer is on the, within the first question. What makes a stock move? And that is my question to all of you, everybody. What makes a stock move? Move. Let's see if you guys can answer this question. Uh, can answer this question. Marv, you got it right. 
Yogis, trader, I know who you are. Bill, yes. Large buyers and sellers, supply and demand. Could everyone put that in there? But by the way, Bell, I didn't hear from you. Dennis, Eric, please don't let me pick on people because listen, fellow traders, if you don't inter if you don't interact, I can't help you. And if you don't interact, you can't be a trader. Traders don't sit there and just watch. You got to interact. Just be on. If you don't know the answer, just give me a question mark at least. At least I know I got a pulse. Okay. BNS. That's all I got to put in there. BNS. Okay. There you go, Mill. There you go, Anna. Thank you very much. Buyers and sellers are what control the market. Supply and demand. So how do we follow those big orders? Well, to find those big orders, you got to have the right tools. And the right tools that we're going to do to follow that big money is first, you got to find a stock that's moving, which is what is what we call tradable. And then we got to go. And before we find those big stocks that are moving and file and see if they're tradable, we need to see if, where to find them, because there are a lot of stocks that are moving and finding them. You got to know how to scan for them. Scanning them is really not that hard. Actually, if anyone here, I don't know if you guys are subscribed to our YouTube channel, our Twitter, our Instagram, we post all our, our watch lists all the time. And um, and we we you know we we give great videos and content to help you become better traders, but it all begins in the pre-market. All right. And I just want to bring up this stock right here, Virtue. Look at this stock. What a big, big run on the stock. Look at this. Went from 6 to 14 in a matter of, I don't know, four hours. All right. Look at all. These are our students. Look what they've traded. Look how they bought the stock, how it went up in the, up in the market. How do we find stocks like that? Everyone's got the same tools. We just work through our big percentage gainers and losers. That's it. And, you know, every, does everyone have a big percentage gain or loser in, the, in, in, their, um, in their trading platform? I mean, you look at a stock virtue up 160%. You're like, well, how do I know it's going up? How do, well, we're going to cover that. But everyone always asks me, how do you get your watch list? Where do you get it from? Well, part of our education at CyberTree University is that we're going to show you how to scan these big volume leaders and losers. And the most important thing, which one's going to give you the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward? And how do we um and how and what makes them get in there? Is it news? Is company fundamentals? Buying and selling? I mean, there's a lot of things that make it move. But the answer is more of the buying and selling. Now, TBLT was on the top gainers, okay? And um, and then how it becomes on the top loser. Well, listen, things make big runs up in the market, they'll also make big runs on the way down. But how do you know it's going to go up? Buyers are out there. Has the stock make finally want to go down? The sellers start coming, kicking in. And that's where we're going to cover right now. And this is where you need to pay attention and fasten your seatbelts because what you're about to see now is going to make you realize why all of you have been trading backwards. Uh, a couple of quick questions coming across here. Uh, isn't it there uh, a net change in price from stock uh depending on demand. Yes, Yoga, so we're going to cover that now, okay? Uh, the scan tools without, without a question is on all trading platforms. Damon, yes, it is. And some of you don't have it turned on, okay? But what I'm going to do, Damon, and everyone here, we're going to invite you in our trading room. We're going to show you how to scan those stocks and how we find them. But what I want to do right now is I want to talk about the four popular tools and out of the four, two of them that you're not using today, which is going to show you how to follow the supply and demand. Now, there are two different types of ways of viewing data of what the stock is doing. You got level one quotes and you got level two quotes. What's the problem with these quotes? They're all free. Now, I don't know about you, everyone, but do you work for free? What's the catch? Why is it free? Because that's all it's worth. Level one is only giving you the quote of the stock. Level two is telling you what that stock is trading at that specific exchange. Now, level two was great back in the early 90s, but we're in 2023 right now. It has been outdated for about over 30 years now. Now, it's great. It moves, goes up and down. But 
question is, how do we get the full depth of market? What do you need to be, what do you need to trade? Well, we're going to start off and talk about something called NASDAQ level, uh, uh, NASDAQ uh, total view, which I call AK level three. Now, with that said, um, just had a quick question here. Does anybody here have NASDAQ uh, total view? Just um, want to just ask, see if everybody has it. Marv, you have it? Okay. No, no. GR doesn't have it. Sanders doesn't have it. Anyone else? No, no, no. Wow, a lot of no's. Okay. Book viewer. Well, I'll teach you how to get it. We're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you. Basically, is what you could do in the meantime. Just take down my email address. I'm going to post it up there right now. Copy my email address. And I'll tell you how to get it. I'm not going to tell you how to get it now because I don't want you guys to go buy it. And then all of a sudden, you don't know how to use it. And it's going to be a waste of money. Okay. So let me, um, I, actually, I was just on NASDAQ last week talking about it. I'm a regular guest uh, showcasing and talking about NASDAQ Book Viewer. So let's talk about what it is. Okay. So here we're looking at a stock. And you can see it started right around $25. And it came all the way down. You notice how it stopped here right around this $22 and like 90 cents price range. After dropping from $25.30, it literally dropped almost $3. After trading for an hour and finding somehow some support levels, it decided to go back up and went back to $24.40. Now, why did it stop at that specific number? Why didn't it go to 22? Why didn't it stop at 2350? Why did it pick that 2280 number, 90 number? Well, when you look over here on the right-hand side, and you look at NASDAQ Book Viewer, you notice the left of the buyers. Actually, let me get my crayons here so I could draw a little bit better. Uh, there we go. Okay. These are your buyers. These are your sellers. This is the price. This is the amount of shares I want to be bought. And these are how many orders make those shares. And when you look your way down, you'll notice you got a 45,000 share buyer right at 2285. Now, if you notice, there are buyers at every single price level. 700, 100, 15 shares, 10 shares. You're talking something about 20 to 100 times more the average. Now, I don't know about you fellow traders. But like we said earlier, how do stocks go up and down? Buyers and sellers. What you're looking at is you have a seat on the exchange. Now, dumb question. How many of you here would like to have a seat on the exchange? To see where Goldman Sachs and BlackRock are running, to go to the heart of the market. How many of you here would love to do that? Of course you would, right? Right? Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? If this is your job... And you have, and you're going to be doing this to you know to to make money doing it. There's only one place to go. You got to go where everybody else is. You got to go to that auction. Well, guess what? The auction doesn't. You don't need to come to the auction to New York. The auction has just came to you. Now you're going to have the same tools that they're looking at to see every order out there. Now let me uh, let me just change the slide here. And okay, so let's move on and look at some other examples here. Uh, how do I get my point? Oh, I'm trying to get my pointer back here. There we go. All right, so now let's look at a let's look at a stock hitting a resistance level. See, a stock goes from fourteen thirty, goes all the way up to fifteen forty, and comes back down. Why did it stop at this fifteen fifty number? Why did it stop at fifteen? Why did it stop at sixteen? Why did it pick that number? Well. Obviously, when a stock goes up, what could prevent it from going higher are sellers. Where are the sellers? On the right-hand side. And you'll notice that there's a 93,000 share seller. Now, is that a lot? I don't know. When you got people showing 100 shares, 200 shares, 1,000 shares, I would think that's a lot of shares. It's a hell of a lot more than you probably would deal with. So how do stocks go up and go down? Supply and demand. Now, this is where everyone makes their mistake. We're all looking for supports and we're all looking for resistance levels. That's the wrong way of looking at it. You cannot have a resistance level unless you have the sellers out there first. So before I ever look at a resistance level, 
The first thing you're supposed to look at is where are the sellers? Because that will tell you and let you know, oh, it's not, I thought it was a major resistance levels at 1520. Oh, another person would say, oh, I thought it was a major resistance at, at 1525. No, no. The resistance level is a 93,000 share seller. And then you'd be like, oh, wow, what a coincidence. That was a resistance six months ago. So that's how things get, get driven. And that's right. That's what you call price action. Let's go over a couple of other examples. Okay. Let's look at this. Let's look at Apple. Okay. Now, if I own a stock and it's going down and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I mean, do I sell it here? I just bought it. Um, when the market, I'm already down big. Okay. Now, the question I have for all of you is this. What's going to make the stock go up? What's going to stop prevent Apple from going lower? What's what do we need? Exactly, everyone. Just everyone just say you need buyers. You need buyers. Now, this is where things get, you know, kind of like um a little awkward. Do you see buyers on a chart? Anyone see a buyer on a chart? No, right? Absolutely not. So what the hell are you looking at a chart for? <laughs> kind of makes sense. So what do you need? Exactly, Alan. You need level three. Okay. Now let's look at level three. And I want all of you here to tell me where do you think, in theory, Apple would hit support levels? Let's see if you guys could figure this out after what we just learned. Where do you think Apple would hit support levels? Devon, you're correct. Very good. Waiting for everybody else. GB, you're right. Robert, you're right. Wow, I don't know if I'm just a good teacher or you guys are just catching along pretty damn quickly. Holy cow, I'm pretty impressed. So if you said 51 at at 184.25, congratulations. You're right. Now, the question is this. Was that hard? Was that was that difficult? Did I lose anybody? Not at all, right? No, Alan, right? Correct. So I didn't even, what, what, what are we basically been talking for, 30 minutes? Think how much you've learned in 30 minutes than all those hours and days that you spent on YouTube. All those hours and days that you spent taking a, a course that someone's teach you an indicator. I just showed you how that you have a seat on the exchange and you're seeing about over 50% of the volume that's just on the NASDAQ on any given, any given moment. And you just figured it out. Now let's let's continue because I got I have a lot more to cover. Rebion, okay, didn't doing great. Um great example. Uh don't buy it. You know, you look at the news, you know, did they beat the news? Everything else. Okay, great. Let's look at what's happening with Rebion. Rebion's going up. Now, how many of you have been out there and you buy a stock? And like we just talked earlier, you hold on to it, you get greedy. You got to have a game plan. Now, looking at Revion, listen, if you had it at 1530, it's at 1630. Where, when do we want, when do we sell it? Where is the top going to be on Revion? Can anybody tell me? Where's the top? Very good. No, you do know. You do know, Mike. You got to know where the sellers are. Do you sellers on a chart? I don't see any sellers here. You see how all of a sudden, like, oh, now I get it. Now you're right. I don't need to see the chart. I need to see this. I need to see the sellers. Now, where do you see the sellers on Revion? Where is the biggest block of shares looking to be sold? Everybody. Great. Well, you know, I'm very impressed. A lot of you guys are chatting, you know. This is how we teach our traders. You need to learn how to talk. You need to see it. Look how quickly you came up with that answer. 
think about it. How many, how long would have you figured that out if you implemented every indicator and read every news article, right? How long does that take you? It won't take you seconds. Delon says that forever. But you figured it out in, in, in a second like that. And guess what? When it hit there, it came back down. It hit there, came back down. It hit there, came back down. It hit there, came back down. I mean, for the past several hours, it never wanted to break 1630. I don't care what indicator tell you. It's all about that 61,000 share seller out there. Now, for everybody here, who here wants to get NASDAQ book viewer? Who here would like to have it? Well, this is all you're going to have to do. I want you to take down my email address. All right. Email me now. And I'll tell you where to get it. Now, this is the great news about NASDAQ Book Viewer. When I started, I had to pay $1,000 a month when I was 20 years old. I'm, I'm 52 now. Doesn't cost 1000 Doesn't cost 500 Doesn't cost 100 You know what it cost? $15 a month. That's it. $15 a month. Who here wouldn't want to pay $15 a month to have a seat on the exchange, but listen, it's not Fausto's software. This is right through NASDAQ, okay? To have a seat on the exchange. Now, I want to save everybody some time right now, okay? We got about another 15 minutes to talk. If you didn't email me and you're not interested of knowing to have a seat on the exchange to see where all the orders are, you should quit trading right now and go to McDonald's and get a $15 job because they just raised minimum wage. Okay. Let me explain something to you. And please don't take this the wrong way. Um, nothing is free. Nothing is free in trading. If you want to go out there to be successful, if anyone here opened up a business, I still have not met a place where I can get free rent. I, unless there's a catch. All right. I still can't figure out why they keep saying, oh, they got free lunches. Someone's obviously paying for it. We all know that. So the thing is this. If you can't afford $15, you can't afford to trade. You really can't. You think $15 is a lot? Try ignorance. Now, listen, like I told you, I don't work for NASDAQ, okay? Um, I am here to help you to prevent from blowing up your account. If you remember and you listened to me carefully, I told you it's a 90% failure rate in trading. My email address again, Fausto PSCTU Corp. All right. Um, you got it. Good, good, good. All right. Well, let's move on because I just covered something called level three. Now there is something called level four. Now, if you thought that was really cool, Wait till you see this. This is really going to blow off your socks. Okay. What's nice about um, level four is now envision where, let me get this crayons out here. Uh, here we go. So this is level three. Now you're looking at level four, which is a heat map. So you could see how long these people been out there. You could see the times and see all these other things. If they're upgrade, if they're upticking, if they're down ticking, if they're getting filled, everything. So it's a lot more data. And I know everyone loves their charts. Well, now imagine implementing all those numbers onto a chart. So Let's go look at a couple of examples of what how it works. Rivion, stock that we traded this week, okay? What I want to show you is this. is Look at this right here. Stock had almost a million shares looking to be bought. Now, this is not 5,000. It's not 100. This is 949,000 shares looking to be bought. Now, Rivion is going down. It started around 1870. It's trending lower. It just went from 70 
And in that in moments, it went all the way down here. Now, why did it stop at $18.20? Well, you could see this seller has been out there for a while. And you could see him right there looking to be bought. The big thing is this. When it comes to orders, which you're not going to learn on NASDAQ Book Viewer. In theory, you would think that that is a major buyer and a major support. But what happens if somebody sells it to him? How many of you have been into a position and saw a stock and be like, oh, big, big support levels? This way, and then all of a sudden it breaks it. You're like, how's that even possible? Well, did you ever thought that such a big buyer like that, because someone could actually sell it to him? And if you saw someone be like, oh my God, someone actually, he actually bought those shares. And like, and if you owned it and you know he's the big kahuna and he just got someone just sold to him, do you want to own own you want to own something that you think would have been a support levels? I don't think so. And if you didn't get out of it, look how much it dropped. Um Your email, your email didn't work that you sent it to me. It should work. Um, you could always call us too if that doesn't work also. Now, look what ended up happening when that big seller got done, right? That big seller got done and it was so bad. It was so horrendous that it went from 1820 and it got crushed. It went all the way down to 1680. So you ever own a stock like, my God, how did stock go down so much? Well, the reason why it went down so much is because that big seller got done. And you know what? When you got big sellers that get done, that's when you got to get, that's when you got to worry. But don't worry. There's always buyers that will come up. Will it go to zero? Listen, new buyers could show up. Just got a new 355,000 share buyer that showed up at 1668. And guess what? When that new buyer showed up, stock started going back up again. So what's nice about seeing the orders out there, uh, no, this actually works on every on every market. It works on New York, it works on S it works on the S P, works on futures, it works on crypto, it works on everything. Okay. But you're seeing all the orders out there. But think about it. You see an order get filled, stock goes lower, new order comes in, doesn't get filled, stock goes up. That's what trading is all about. Now, let's see what a stock does in reverse. Here's a stock PLTR. Big, big, big iceberg order. You could see that there are 4,000 shares, 8,000 shares. But when you get around 1750 and 1765, you got 100,000, you got 141,000. Now, what happened here is that the stock never wanted to go past those numbers. And then all of a sudden, these sellers start popping in everywhere. Now you got a 72,000 share seller. You got a 99,000 share seller. They've been hovering there for a while. They just don't want to get out. They just keep selling and selling and selling. And when you're looking at the stock, I'm like, wait, I understand. The stock is not going lower. It's not going lower because those sellers don't want to get out. Here's another example. You, uh, you software, stock started around $22 right out of the gate. Takes a big, big run from 2220 all the way to 24. All of a sudden, big iceberg order shows up. 76,000, 34,000. What happened? Never got out. He never got out, and the stock went down, 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 down. Now, that is a stock not only did it come to resistance levels, but it shows you how someone just shows up and says, hey, put the brakes on it. And did did he put the brakes on it? He sure damn did. He sure damn uh, did at twenty four. So think about how much. Like I said this before, smarter and better trade decisions. If you're able to see these orders when they come up, if they get executed, and everything else. Now, one person is asking me, um, you know, how do I get level four? Listen, I'm going to tell you how to get it in the next five minutes. Next five minutes, I'm going to show you how to get it. But, uh, but before I do that, I want to show you how stocks do breakouts. Just like the stock broke a low, stock hovered, hovered, hovered. Eventually, somebody came out there. 
and says, you know what? I really like the company. I want to buy it. Boom, the thing breaks out. That's why if you look here on the long-term chart, stock went from 22 up to 24. And you know what? That could happen. Now, what I want to do right now before we I show you how to register and I can teach you this live in the market, I want to have a little fun here. Um, I want to go to the real markets. And I want anybody here, pick a stock. And it's got to be more of a stock that has some volatility in it. Anyone, pick a stock, any stock. And I'll tell you if I like it. Uh, Tesla. A lot of people think in Tesla. Okay. Tesla, Uber, JP. Hold on. Let me see what I got here. I got to load up on my level four. Um, hold on a second. I just got to delete some things here. Tesla, Google, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, let's look at NVIDIA. NVDA, NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA, maybe. I like NVIDIA. NVDA. All right. So while this data is loading up, um, let's look at the chart really quick. What happened to NVIDIA? Yes, this is being recorded. So if you missed half of it, Hamas, you'd be fine. What happened to NVIDIA, everybody? It dropped. At what number? At one number. Yeah, I mean, like right here, you could see it right around 500, give or take. Big, big resistance levels, right? Big resistance levels. So let me just show you something really quick here. A lot of data on the video. All right. So how would we have known to get out at 500? Because yesterday it ran from 492 and it went all the way, give or take around this $500 number, right? Why 500? Now, please don't tell me, oh, it's obviously it's a whole number, Fausto. You know what I mean? It's a lot of things. No. I'm going to ask everybody this question again. How do stocks go up and go down? How do stocks go up and go down, everybody? Don't. And I'll keep saying it over and over and over again. Buyers and sellers, right? Supply and demand. Okay. Give me one more second. Let's let the data fill up right here. I'm going to share this with you. You're going to be quite amazed about this. Watch. Second. Okay. We are looking at level four right here. And right here is pre-market. You see it says nine to 9.30 right here. Let me draw right here. See right here? Nine to 9.30. Okay. And you said the stock was basically hovering here. At 9.30, an order came out. That order, this is live. 194,000. Now, I don't know if anybody's here good with that math, but hold on a second. 194,000 times 500 equals about almost $100 million of stock is looking to be sold right there. What happened at 500? Why did it go down? Because Fausto said so? Is because Robert said so? No, it's because this person's out there. Now, you could see it on NASDAQ book viewer because that's a current order book. But imagine seeing, you know, seeing him out there and knowing he's still out there. He's still out there. Now, let me zoom in here and you could see now that the stock is building some support levels at... 485. It came all the way down and then right around this time at 1215, which is right now is what? What time is it now? It's uh let me sort of fix this right here. 
There we go. Um, it's uh, what is it? It's we we got about we're at fifty two right now, right? So you could see like right now it's starting to build some support levels, right here. And you could see it. It did it here. Let me clear this out. It did it here. And it bounced back up and it's doing it again right here. Not as big as the big seller here at 500. And you can see right there, you know, as much, but that was really, really big resistance levels. But that's the reason why it went down. Now, did you need, did you need a, hold on, a moving average, a stochastic? A Bolger band, a MACD, a stochastic. Did that help you answer that question? What was easier to read? This or that? I rest my case, fellow traders. Now, who, who here would like to learn more of how to read the future? And who here would like to learn how to trade these markets? Well, just to get everybody know, this is why 90% of people fail. And this is why I love what I do. You see, we could all learn the fundamentals of the market as in what makes a stock and psychology and the discipline and all that. But it all comes down to the right tools. You should know those things. You should know what a stock is. You should know why you trade your futures. Some of you don't even know what what you don't even know what, what what corn is when you're trading on a future. What does that actually really mean? Well, I know what the stock market means, but at the overall, do you does that really get to change your, you know, the way you look at a stock other than seeing, you know, that hundred million shares are going to be sold, you know, on on Nvidia? Because that's where it comes down to it. Um, I'm gonna show you one more. All right, let me show you one more because one of you guys asked me this question. All right, before I move forward, let's look at Tesla. First of all, let me fix this chart because it's giving me a headache. I'm going to go back to my defaults. We're going to look at Tesla. We're going to do one more, okay? Uh, oops, I don't know what's going on here. Hold on a second. I had a problem here. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Tesla. All right. Now, looking at Tesla, where do you think... The stock right now is trading right here. Where do you think ballpark resistance levels would be? Let's see if you guys can answer this question. Where do you think resistance levels is probably going to be? Pick a number. Well, we're at two. We're at two hundred and forty-four dollars. So two hundred is a little bit out of the way. Where's resistance levels? 300, 286, 270, 270. Okay. You ready for this? Now, where do you think resistance levels, uh, where do you think resistance level is on Tesla? Look at the number you guys all picked out. Because a lot of you are right. Some of you picked 246, 248, but look where the really big seller is, 250 for 273,000 shares, right? And he's been out there for a long time. Did you need an indicator to tell you that? Once again, I rest my case, <laughs> okay? A lot of fun, right? All right, so 
I've been doing this for 30 years and everything, nothing really has changed other than technology got better. You don't got to be licensed. You don't got to come here to New York and do it anymore. All right. So I like, I trade every day and, and I trade with my traders and I want to invite all of you guys to come in and see them, us do this live. So when it comes to it, I want to invite you to not only trust me, but trust that it works. And I want you to invite you to come into my cyber group room, which is my trading room. My trading room has been around for 30 years. Believe it or not, I started the first one. This is the original trading room that's been out there. You see them pop up everywhere, but this is the original one that's been out there. Now, just please keep in mind, I got two families, okay? I got my everyday family and I have my traders I spend with every day. I want you to be part of this family. I'm looking to teach traders like you to help find iceberg orders so we could trade together, make money together. That's what it's all about. So this is our cyber group room. I'll introduce you right now into the room right now. Here's our trading room right now. This is live data right now. And you can see all the instructors at Cyber Trading University here on the left-hand side. And you can see all our traders here on the, on the um, working our way down. You're going to meet all these people. We got commentary. We got live markets, everything. And we're trading all day. All right. Now, we do live auto commentary the first hour. And we do it the last hour. We also invite um, gurus to come in and be, as be special guests to come all the time. With that said, if you've done your homework, you probably noticed that we got a five-star rating on Google, which is unheard of. And we're also, we're also endorsed by some of the biggest brokerage firms in the industry. Now, what I'm looking for, like I told you before, remember I told you about NASDAQ? And I said, listen, if you can't afford $15, you don't afford to trade. Well, guess what? I'm going to lower the price and it's even going to be better. I want to invite all of you to come into my trading room for one whole week for $9. Money back guaranteed. All you got to do is take your phone, scan it, or you can click on that little hyperlink that we just posted up in the room. Now, let me explain something to you. If you can't, I'm not looking for free people, okay? Because if you can't afford $9, then you technically can't afford to open up a brokerage account. If you can't afford $9, then you can't afford a cup of coffee, okay? And go out and buy it, you know? There's nothing free in this world. Trading is like owning a business. You got to make an investment. We're not asking you for $90, $900, or $9,000. I, the $9 is just telling me that you're a real person. That's all it is. That's all it's basically telling us. Now, this is what you're going to get for the $9. You're going to get one whole week of our live trading from 7.45 to 5 o'clock during market hours. You're also going to get three workshops, value of $5.97, how to trade on level two, how to use those time and sales, and also entries and exits. We're also going to give you 100 hours of workshops of our traders talk where we actually review our traders um, accounts. And we you know, basically we teach you how to stop losing it, the mistakes they make so you don't make them yourselves. And I'm also going to give you my book. It's a $47 value. You can go buy it on Amazon. You could buy it here for $9. Get the week trial and I'll give it to you for free. Give you a PDF, a PDF, a PDF version of it. And... One last bonus I'm going to throw in there. If you are the first 20 people that register right now, this is great. I will actually personally talk to you on the phone. Now, listen, you want to be able to get a free consultation? I don't work for free. You don't want me to work for free. Okay? Because obviously I can't be that good working for free. But... If you take me take the trading seriously, I'll treat you uh, treat you seriously. I will give you the same amount of respect if you respect Cyber Trade University and myself because I don't want you guys to be part of the ninety percent of failure rate. It is such I, I deal with it all day long. I do presentations like this all all day long. Everyone's out there trying to find that little crystal ball. They want someone to tell them what to do. It's time not to tell people what you to do because it's obviously not working. You got to know what they're selling you so you can figure it out on your own. And it all starts here. Get your phone, click on the link, one or the other, scan that QR code, 
scan that code and let's get you in the room. Now we got a couple of great questions coming across. I got about five more minutes before we go. Uh, one of the questions is um, what happens after a week? It's up to you. But if you're asking me, we're going to bill you and charge you some ridiculous thing that people do. No, we do not do that. Absolutely not. Listen, I have a reputation. I don't care about your money. Okay. I care about us trading together and that you get it. Like you get it. Like I showed you how, you know, Tesla had that big 270,000 share seller out here, you know, at 25 in the video, which is even awesome. Have that almost 196,000 share seller 500, you know, we need to have a game plan, teach you that game plan, how to work together, how to see if they're refreshing, see if those orders get filled, all those things. Uh, but all stocks there. Now, when you register, very important. You're going to get five questions. There's going to be a question here. You need to tell us a little bit about you. Let us know who you're trading with. Did you take training before? How much money you're trading with? The more you tell us, the better we can help you. Then when you, and then the next page is you're going to book your appointment. Every one of you are going to talk to a education advisor at CyberTree University. We want you to go in there and we want you to understand what's going on in the market. You know, what you're seeing in the trading room. So we don't want you guys to get lost. We take the time to give you the best customer service because we want to give you not only the best experience, but we want to make sure you don't make that mistake. Okay. A um, couple of questions here. Uh, do I need a brokerage account to trade? No, absolutely not. We don't want you to buy or sell anything. This is just a $9 trial to watch and see if other people, what they're doing. You're just getting, you're sitting on the sidelines. You're going to watch and see how we find these stocks and everything else. Don't worry about everything else. You're here to just watch and learn. That's it. Um, which I'm call. Could I... Start my, I have another question here. Can I start my lesson? Uh, I'm going away. Can I start next week? Yes, you can start it whenever you want, okay? Just lock in the $9 now and then worry. And listen, you tell your education advisor or book your appointment when you want to do that. Now, there are a couple of people here doing a couple of shout outs. I want to do a couple of shout outs here um, that registered. So, um, Devon, I got your registration. From uh, Wisconsin, welcome aboard. Steve Pearson, got your registration. From uh, Canada, welcome aboard, got your registration. Thank you very much. Paul W. from Poughkeepsie, New York, got your registration. Uh, Mark Steph uh, Steffens from North Carolina, got your registration. Welcome aboard. I still see some of you guys are registering right now. Thanks, everyone. Listen. When I come in and do these events, we had over 100 people in here. I expect all 100 of you to register. And listen, I know some of you are students or whatever it is. I see, the, I see the orders coming in. Great. I see them coming in. Everybody here has nothing to lose but to gain. The worst thing that could happen is that you learn something that trading is not for you. Now, one of you just asked me, what specifically we're going to learn? Well, we're going to talk about day trading. We're going to talk about swing trading and we're going to talk about options trading. We might even talk a little bit about crypto or anything else, but mainly it all starts on what happens over the course of the day. I day trade because I like to day trade. I just like to make my days pay and I like to go to sleep at night. Okay. If I lost, I lost. It's part of the game. No problem, Phil. Um, I didn't see you register yet, but you know what? If you got to run, you know, you got the link, just register. You can do it on your phone. Just scan that QR code. Uh, Michael R. from Texas, got your registration. John from Chicago, got your registration. George from Arizona, got your registration. Welcome aboard. Welcome to the team. All right. Any other questions? You're more than welcome, John. More than welcome. Thanks a lot, Greg and Devon. Got your registration. All right. More than welcome. Um, listen, guys, fellow traders. Trading is, you know, I have a passion to do it. I love it. I love changing people's lives. You know, I know some of you have been hitting this and doing this for a while and still can't figure it out. Um, I was just talking to someone the other day, just yesterday. So he's been doing this for a year 
and he's still breaking even. And I'm like, you know what? You're kind of lucky. You know, you're still in the business and you still got this far. You didn't blow up your account. But think about all those hours you spent, days, weeks, the whole year. You could have worked at McDonald's and made more money. So he started and he says, you know what? You're right. And, um, you know, and now he's a student at Cybertrain University. You know, you're going to meet him. Um, you know, uh, Grant Brockway, another person out there. A lot of these great traders. But it all starts by making a small investment. $9, you got nothing to lose. And one other thing. If you don't like it, I'll give you $9 back. I don't need your $9, traders. Okay? I just want serious traders. You're filling out basically a questionnaire. You're filling out an application fee. That's all it comes down to it. Um, Arno, is there flexible people outside America? Yes, there is. We got people from all over the world. There's people from UK, uh, Switzerland, Australia, all over Canada, West Coast, East Coast, everywhere, which is nice about the market. You could like I was just talking to someone yesterday from from Israel and, you know, as a student, he just signed up uh, two days ago and he's like, I trade it because I can I work in a day. I only want to trade at night because I'm a teacher. And I'm like, absolutely. Some people, you know, listen, I have people from Hawaii that trade the open that wake up at three in the morning. Just that's what they like. Some people, depending on what your style is, but no matter what it is, just please keep in mind. It's not a full-time job. Uh, Martin H has got your registration from Florida. Welcome aboard it's from Sarasota. Welcome aboard. What's the minimum capital that you need to work with? Well, listen, you know what? That's a great question too. I'm going to bring up a stock right here. Okay. So, Here's a stock that we traded today, KNTE, all right? Stock started this morning around uh, $2, and it ran all the way to $2.60, okay, in a matter of about less than an hour. 50 cents on 1,000 shares on a $2,000 investment, okay, is $500 a day. It's $100,000 a year salary. Would you need to buy... A thousand shares of that, two thousand dollars. You don't need a lot of money to do that, fellow traders. Okay, you don't really need a lot. It's a misconception. Any other questions? All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta go. So if you do, shoot them out now. But fill out that registration. I guess that's the most important thing. I see a lot of you coming in. Um, Lance got your registration from Melbourne. Welcome aboard. Uh, Paul just got your registration from where? Where's that? Uh, Illinois. Okay, got your registration. Lucy from UK just got your registration. Welcome aboard. All right, fellow traders. So you got the number. You could call. You could register online. If you didn't register with us, maybe you're not ready. It's fine. I get it. If you want to push it off, you could always worry about next next month or you know after the holidays, whatever it is. But don't waste any time. Mark is very volatile. You see what's happening in the market. Let's get into it. Let's learn how to play the game. Think about how much I taught you in a short period of time, how much more you have learned if you actually saw it live all day long. So I look forward to teaching you all. Thanks for listening. And this is being recorded. If you want to watch it again, please go out, share us, like us, join our YouTube channel, join our Instagram, our Twitter, get all our alerts. And uh, like I said, it's all about surround yourself with successful people. A couple of, one last person. Um, Imran Bang from uh, Ontario County just got your registration. Welcome aboard. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you all in the trading room.